Now let's look at the important passage in Luke 128. If Mary is said to be full of grace, does that lead us to conclude that she was conceived without sin, lived a sinless life, and later was assumed bodily into heaven? Mariology says yes. Logic and scripture say no. Why? It's because the Bible says the same thing about Stephen in Acts 6.8. It says, Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Yet even though the Bible clearly says Stephen was full of grace, no one in the church says that he was conceived without sin, lived a sinless life, and was assumed bodily into heaven. And the same is true concerning Luke 1.28. In spite of Mary's being identified as full of grace, the New Testament knows nothing of her immaculate conception or sinless life. Rather, the Apostle Paul taught after Mary's life that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Now, I also want you to keep in mind that there is only one other place in the New Testament that the word found in Luke 1.28 translated full of grace, kekeratomene, from keratu is used, and that is in Ephesians 1.6. In Ephesians, Paul writes about the rich grace God has poured out on all Christians, and he writes, to the praise of His glorious grace, which He favored on us in the one He loves. Now the word favored here is the same Greek word used in Luke 1.28 about Mary. And it is why the King James Version and the NIV translation both translate Luke 128 this way. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. In fact, Arndt and Gingrich, the standard Greek lexicon says, this word means to bestow favor upon, to favor highly. Then how is this same word used in Ephesians 1.6 in the Catholic Dewey Reims Version? Well, it's translated this way. Unto the praise of the glory of His grace, in which He hath graced us, that's the same word here, in His beloved Son. Now let's assume the Catholic translation, He hath graced us, or full of grace, is correct. If this same word, full of grace, used in Luke 1.28 means that Mary was conceived without sin, lived a sinless life, and was assumed bodily into heaven, then Shouldn't the same word used here in Ephesians 1.6 logically mean that all Christians are conceived without sin and live sinless lives? But of course that would be ridiculous. To say that the Bible teaches that God has graced us, favored us, does not mean we were conceived without sin or lived a sinless life. And that's why biblical scholarship, including some biblical scholars in the Catholic Church, deny that Mary's sinlessness can be drawn from the words of Luke 128. As Ludwig Ott says, the Bible does not explicitly teach this. In fact, in the Catholic Encyclopedia, under its article for the Immaculate Conception, it makes an even stronger statement. It says, quote, no direct or categorical and stringent proof of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception can be brought forward from Scripture, end quote. <laughs>